something unique to shoulder replacements is that there are two different types of shoulder replacements. A very common procedure nowadays is called a reverse shoulder replacement. What this basically means is that we reverse the orientation of the ball and socket inside the shoulder joint to allow the shoulder to function without a rotator cuff. There's a lot that goes into deciding which type of shoulder replacement is best for each person. The reverse shoulder replacement was initially designed to treat a condition called rotator cuff tear arthropathy, which is where someone has had a large rotator cuff tear that has been present for years that has caused a certain pattern of arthritis to develop in the shoulder. Over time, our indications for a reverse shoulder uh, replacement have expanded and continue to expand. Nowadays, we use reverse shoulder replacements to treat a lot of different conditions. We still use it to treat rotator cuff tear arthropathy, but also use it to treat patients with irreparable rotator cuff tears, or patients with arthritis that also have a rotator cuff tear that's not repairable, or patients who have um, significant glenoid uh, or socket side bone deformities or bone loss. It can also work well and be a little bit more predictable in situations of recurrent instability um, and potentially older patients who are very stiff. Recovery after a reverse shoulder replacement typically begins with a short period of sling immobilization for about three weeks. After that, we start range of motion exercises either with a therapist or at home using a pulley system. And usually by about six to eight weeks after surgery, most patients have most of their range of motion back. We'll typically start some strengthening exercises around two to three months after surgery. And by about three months or so after surgery, most patients are back to doing the things that they enjoy.